If it doesn't uh, go, I'll keep myself told me and I'll just uh, put on uh, my copy. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I is this? Uh, are you able to make it a little bit larger? Okay. Um, uh, I apologize. Uh, uh, okay, let's uh, try to uh, look at this. We'll work with whatever we uh, care about. So the story is the following. Uh, we mentioned that there's a machlokas uh, between Rambam and Rai concerning the following issue, Bar Kochva. Uh, uh, we know that he was considered to be Rabbi Akiva and trained the possibility that he is a Mashiach. This is explicit in the uh, Yushalmi and according to some yourselves of the uh, Bavli. Uh, in the Sefer Yad Pshita by Rav Nachum Elias uh, 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 from a Malad mm-hmm. Mim that passed away uh, a number of weeks ago, he indicates that according to some of yourselves in the Babli, also there we have Rabbi Akiva taking the position of Barakochava was uh, the uh, uh, Mashiach. Um, now, uh, what exactly happens to uh, Barakochava? How did Barakochava's uh, downfall, how does death come about? So over here there's uh, different approaches. The Babli has one approach. Uh, the uh, Yushalmi another. According to the uh, Babli, it says that they tested Bar Kochva to see whether he was able to judge based on mm-hmm. a sense of smell. Did he have some supernatural powers? And when he wasn't able to do so, so then uh, they, uh, it says that uh, Katlu, that they uh, killed him. That's the uh, Gemara in uh, Sanhedrin. On the other hand, uh, the uh, Yushalmi indicates that he uh, died, perhaps was killed by the uh, Goyim, or died uh, from some uh, snake. Now, is this machlokas as to how Rabbi Kiva died? Is this uh, of any interest other than historical interest? So it might seem that yes, because after all, uh, the Rambam says that Mashiach doesn't need to prove himself by performing any miracles, and he brings the raya from that which uh, Bar Kochva uh, didn't perform any miracles, and nevertheless, Rabbi Kiva considered him to be Mashiach. On the other hand, the Ravid says, what you're talking about? Uh, the very fact that Bar Kochva wasn't able to perform miracles is the basis of why uh, Chazal assumed that he wasn't Mashiach, and that's why they killed him. So uh, the Kessel Mishnah understands that that Machlokas, uh, uh, the Kessel Mishnah indicates uh, that uh, this Machlokas as to the, uh, 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 whether you can or can't bring a Raya from uh, the story of Bar Kochva <coughs> as to whether our as to whether uh, Mashiach needs to perform accounts as to what happened with a Bar Kochva. Uh, the Rambam assumed, like the Ushami, like the Echa Rabasi, that uh, Bar Kochva wasn't asked to perform any uh, miracles, whereas the uh, Ravid uh, assumes, like the uh, uh, Babna. Um, okay, uh, we saw that the guest Mishnah understands this machlokas is one which uh, uh, also uh, is a function, period, although it will be a wonderful time, won't necessarily involve any change in uh, uh, nature. That's the position of the uh, Rambam. Okay, in any case, so uh, a number of points with respect to uh, this uh, debate about Barco. Uh Number one. Uh, there's a uh, story uh, where once Rabbi Chaim was traveling on a train and he uh, overheard that on a uh, nearby uh, seat in the train, there was some missionary that was trying to convince some Jew that uh, Yashka is the true Messiah. And uh, at some point in that discussion, uh, the uh, uh, missionary, th- missionary told the Jew, and hey, you guys, what do you guys know about Messiah? After all, Rabbi Akiva, that was considered to be such a great scholar, he thought 
that Bar Kokhba was the uh, Mashiach. Uh, so you see that when it comes to understanding about the Messiah, you guys uh, uh, don't have any uh, Habana, you guys uh, uh, don't have a uh, good understanding. And the Jew didn't know what to respond. Uh, Reb Chaim, the story at least uh, goes, Reb Chaim uh, uh, decided to uh, get involved and walked over to the missioner and says, hey, how do you guys know uh, that, in fact, Rabbi Kiva was uh, uh, wrong? Maybe, in fact, Bar Kokhba uh, was the uh, Messiah. To which the missionary said, that's ridiculous. How could Bar Kokhba have been the Messiah? After all, he was uh, killed. He's killed. He couldn't have been the Messiah. To which uh, Rav Chaim says, well, just think about what you said. He was killed. He couldn't be the Messiah. That's the case. Somebody's killed. couldn't be the Messiah. Then uh, apparently your Shita uh, about uh, Yashka, about uh, Yeshu, uh, is also uh, ridiculous. Uh, I'd kind of sorry. So in any case, so uh, Rav Chaim gave a nice answer to that uh, missionary. He, uh, uh, no, the missionary uh, uh, obviously is all washed up. Uh, but the question is, uh, what is the true response to that uh, Taina, that Taina on Bar Kokhba? Uh, or on Rabbi, I'm sorry, on Rabbi Akiva. How could Rabbi Akiva have thought that Bar Kokhba was the uh, uh, Mashiach if he was uh, killed? So Rambam seems to be offering an answer to that question by this framework which Rambam suggests that uh, there's such a thing as being Becheskas Mashiach and being Mashiach uh, Bevad. After all, uh, the Rambam uh, indicates that, uh, uh, the Rambam indicates that there's such a thing as being Becheskas Mashiach and such a thing as being Mashiach Bevad. Uh, the Rambam, after all, told us that uh, if there is an individual that's able to, uh, if we just could, uh, I keep, I'm sorry, could I ask if we enlarge in this a uh, little bit? Uh, thank you. Okay, that's great. Uh, that's great. So Rambam says, um, so some uh, king from the Jewish people that's involved in our mitzvahs and fights the wars of God, then Raman says, And then if he continues and is able to build the base of Mikdash and to gather all of uh, the Goliaths, uh, then he's Mashiach Bevada. So Raman indicates a sort of primaries for uh, Mashiach. There's the two stages. The first stage, is to become Becheskas Mashiach. Uh, there's an individual that's known as Becheskas Mashiach if he's able to uh, do a number of things. If he's a uh, Melech, he based David, involved in Torah and mitzvahs, uh, gets the Jewish people involved, uh, fights the wars of God, then he's Becheskas Mashiach. Uh, if he goes a step further and is able to build the base of Mikdash and Kulay, then he's Mashiach Mubada. So uh, the Rambam would presumably tell us that Bar Kokhba was Becheskas Mashiach. And therefore, Rabbi Akiva thought that Bar Kokhba was Mashiach, not because he was a Bada Mashiach, but he was Becheskas Mashiach. Uh, what we'll need to assume, if in fact we understand like uh, that, uh, if we take that approach, is that Bar Kokhba was me based David, uh, was Hogebator, but Osek with mitzvos, Kedab Rabbi. I was involved in Torah mitzvos. Uh, he certainly fought the wars of the Jewish people. Uh, he was somewhat of an inspirational uh, figure. And uh, uh, so we'll have to assume that the Rambam would tell us that Rabbi Kiva understood that Bar Kochla was Becheskas Mashiach. Then when he saw he wasn't able to accomplish the things that Mashiach meant to accomplish, he saw that it was, none, was not Mashiach Bavada. But it was a nice try. Uh, uh, obviously, that doesn't mean that Yashka was a nice try. Uh, he wasn't involved in those things that the Rambam does list uh, need to be done. So, uh, just mm -hmm. so to summarize that last point, so how do we explain that which Rabbi Akiva made that serious mistake of thinking that Barakoch was Mashiach? Answer, well, the Rambam understood that Barakoch was Becheskas Mashiach, although it wasn't Mashiach Bavada. That Barbanel on the uh, left side of the uh, page, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, but now on the left side of the page, does raise that possibility that 
uh, uh, that the Bar Kochva was uh, perhaps from Malta's base David. Let me see where that is. Um, at some point, I think he raised that uh, possibility. Uh, what's interesting about that Bar Benel is that he has some way of resolving the Babli and the Ushan. The Babli seems to indicate that the scholars killed him. Uh, the Ushami indicates that he died some sort of uh, natural death or that the Goyim killed him. Is there any way of resolving those uh, two? So there are those, so that Barbanel raises the possibility that perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps uh, in line, um, about line 47, 48, uh, Vine, uh, he says, I'm going to read it uh, on uh, he didn't have this uh, supernatural abilities. Katlu, Danu also, thank you. Danu also, Doesn't mean that they killed him. After all, the Mindal Oz says, Lama you mas masa. Uh, there's no chiyav misa on someone that it's not uh, Mashiach, so why would they uh, kill him? Although, although, although that suggests that Mashiach is meant to have a power of Nabua. And if you claim you're a Navi and you don't, you're a Navi Sheker, and therefore you're chiyav misa. So the Mindal Oz though says, Lama you mas masa. So it says that Barbara it doesn't mean they killed him, it just means that they didn't pray for his welfare. Uh, they just let uh, history take its natural course. If somebody is Mashiach, we're meant to pray for him. They're meant to uh, uh, ask God to help him be successful in his mission. But when they saw that this fellow was a, uh, uh, that Barkov wasn't the real guy, then a Danu also just judged him and they uh, uh, dealt with him as Echad Mistakim, Mistakim as Lashon Sakana. The Chain Haya Sharagu Haromiim. Uh, it was killed by the Romans when Beitar was uh, captured. Uh, the actual downfall of Bar Kokhba, according to the, uh, uh, the Yushalmi and the Eicha Rabasi that have similar sources, if we uh, shift over a bit to where my uh, pointer is, uh, to the, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, there it relates that the downfall of, Rabbi, uh, of Bar Kokhba was the following. Bar Kokhba, although he was uh, somewhat of a spiritual leader, a charismatic uh, leader, and had uh, great potential, but nevertheless, unfortunately, like many leaders, when they have any suspicion whatsoever that there's somebody uh, that is undermining their leadership, uh, then they will uh, uh, do uh, whatever they can to uh, harm that individual. And in fact, uh, there the Yushami relates the uh, problem. You might be able to make this a little bit uh, larger. But this is the uh, Yushami in uh, Tainus. I'm sorry, a bit to the uh, uh, right over here. Uh, a bit to the uh, left. Um, okay, uh, I'm just a bit uh, large. Yeah, we're. Getting there? Great. Okay. Uh, so in any case, so the Gemara there relates to the uh, following. Uh, and Daryanus Kesa uh, was uh, laid siege on, uh, laid siege on uh, Beta. Shalashon Mechsa Asa Adaryanus Makif uh, al-Beta, late siege, and uh, Rab Lazar Hamodai, uh, that happened to be, I think, an uncle of Bar Kokhba, Rab Lazar Hamodai from the Ir Modi'in, Yoshev al Asak v'la Eprim, Mispal v'chol yom, v'omri ribona olamim, al teshev v'din ayom, al teshev v'din ayom. So Adaryanus, Mezal lay, was intending the possible of leaving, he gave up. But then there was a Kusi, the Kusim were never very friendly with the Jewish people, and the Kusim said to Adarianus, hey, don't give up. I'll see to it that you'll conquer the city. So what did the Kusi do? The Kusi uh, entered the uh, city 
uh, somehow enter the city from the Biva, according to some, to the sewer system, however it is, he enters the city and uh, he uh, approached Rabbi Lazar Modai. He uh, saw to it that uh, there would be some witnesses that would uh, see uh, him, the Kusi, speaking to Rabbi Lazar Modai. Although Rabbi Lazar Modai didn't even notice the Kusi there, Rabbi Lazar Modai was involved in his Torah, involved in his uh, tefillah. And then, uh, so it says, Abid uh, Bego Udne. So he went and he whispered something to Rabbi Lazar Modai. Again, Rabbi Lazar Modai himself wasn't aware. He didn't even notice. Uh, but Hamune named himself. So people that saw are uh, the Skusi speaking to the Bnei Hamadina. And then they brought this Skusi to uh, Bar Kochba. Uh, and so Bar Kochba says, hey, what went on over there? What exactly is it that you discussed with uh, that you discussed with Rabbi Lazar So originally he doesn't. So initially he doesn't want to tell him that if I uh, 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 tell you, uh, if I don't tell you, you're going to kill me. If I tell you, then uh, the, uh, then Adarianus is going to kill me. In any case, so uh, in the end he tells him. Then he tells him that hey, uh, I discussed with him the possibility of our surrendering to the Romans. Uh, and Rabbi Lazar Modai was comfortable with our surrendering uh, the city to the Romans. Now, of course, in reality, that never happened. Rabbi Lazar Modai uh, didn't know of any such uh, plans. Uh, wasn't uh, on the country, was doubting that the city shouldn't fall to the Romans. But uh, Rabbi Lazar Modai was called by Bar Kochba and uh, was asked, hey, what, what went on there with this uh, Kusi? And uh, said Rabbi Lazar Modai, a low club. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And Bar Kochva gave a boot, gave a kick to Rabbi Lazar Modai and killed him. So Bar Kochva kills Rabbi Lazar Modai that was protecting the city and preventing the city from being conquered. So some Basco comes out and criticizes the wicked leaders uh, that have overconfidence in their own power. And in fact, Miyad Nokata Besar Nerag Ben Koziba. And Bar Kochva was uh, killed. So this is the uh, Yushami version of the death of uh, Bar Kochva. From the generation of Yushami, it might seem that there was some uh, snake that uh, killed uh, Bar Kochva as a result of his uh, being uh, uh, doing such a uh, terrible uh, thing. So that's the Yishami's version of the downfall of uh, Bar Kochva. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, there seems to be a machlokas in Babylon Yishami uh, that Barbonell uh, suggests that uh, they're not necessarily at odds. One could understand that the Babylon doesn't really mean to say that they uh, killed them, although the writer did seem to interpret that a Babli in a, a literal uh, the Babli in a, a literal uh, sense. Um, okay, let me also point out uh, with respect to uh, that which Rabbi Akiva thought that Bar Koch was Mashiach, let me just point out that the Abar Benel entertains the possibility that Rabbi Akiva did not think that he was, uh, that Bar Koch was the true Mashiach uh, uh, Ben David, but rather just a Mashiach, there's the concept of uh, Mashiach Ben uh, Yosef. Uh, after all, there's some, uh, if you go back, uh, if we move the page to the right, uh, if that's uh, possible, please. Move the page to the right, back to the Abar Benel, and his Sefer uh, Yeshua and Meshicha. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, oh, you got it, right? Going down a little bit. Uh, a little bit, uh, move the page uh, up. Uh, but, uh, right? Okay, great. Uh, so in any case, Vinay Vanerli Baze, he also entertains the possibility, uh, one possibility is uh, that uh, he was the real uh, Mashiach, but another possibility, I'm sorry if you could uh, move uh, uh, down on the page, an alternative possibility, uh, more, more, Bashanis. Shabbikim, Lokhashab, Shibben, Kozima, Melech, Israel. 
the messengers, the uh, those that operate on behalf of God, are referred to as Mashiach, just like there's some Pasuk which refers to Koresh, Cyrus, as uh, Mashiach. Uh, there's some Pasuk that says, Tor Marsha the Koresh. So he was also sent by God to uh, destroy some enemies, and therefore he's entitled Mashiach. So perhaps also Bar Kochva, that Rabbi Geva thought was Mashiach, was not the Messiah, but the capital men. Uh, rather, he was a Messiah, he was Mashiach ben Yosef, that whose job is not to uh, bring Mishpat and stuck on this world, rather than to fight the battles of God. That's a possibility entertained by that Barbanel. Uh, of course, the Rambam did not assume that way. The Rambam Bechlal does not mention the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, the concept which is mentioned in the Gemara. The Rambam doesn't mention that. So in any case, so uh, to summarize some of the things that we saw about Bar Kokhba, we saw the Rabbi Kiva brought a ride from Bar Kokhba as to the initial appearance of Mashiach. The Rambam disagreed with that based on the uh, Rambam's reading of the Babli, the Rambam perhaps uh, relied on the uh, uh, Yushalmi. We saw that uh, uh, there are those that suggest, we discussed, that those that suggest that Bar Kokhba uh, was, was Bechezka's Mashiach, uh, although it turned out there wasn't Mashiach Bivad. Uh, maybe in this context, let's talk about what dangers exist uh, by Mashiach Sheker. Uh, uh, why is there any great danger that exists by someone's Mashiach Sheker? So uh, certainly, if we're talking about a Mashiach Sheker that comes and tries to abrogate, to change the laws of the Torah, that's something that does bring about a great danger. What about someone that's not coming to change the laws of the Torah? Does that involve any danger? Is that something which can bring harm? So it should be pointed out that it can bring harm uh, in a number of ways. Can anybody suggest what harm is there in a Mashiach Sheker? You mean the people will be very let down once they find out that it was Mashiach Sheker? Uh, what I think you might have said is that uh, people, if uh, there is a Mashiach Sheker, then uh, they uh, might, uh, uh, when it turns out that he's Sheker, then people lose hope in the whole concept of Mashiach. They lose hope in the whole concept of, uh, uh, of uh, Mashiach when they see that uh, this guy ain't real, they'll think that perhaps the whole concept is not true. That's one possibility. Another possibility is, uh, which is not mutually exclusive, another possibility is that being that Mashiach is an individual that uh, is involved in fighting battles, so if a fellow says, Acharai, follow me into battle, are we meant to follow him? Well, hey, if uh, the fellow does stand some chance of being a Mashiach, then uh, great. But otherwise, if uh, we have no reason to assume that it's Mashiach, then to follow him to battle is very dangerous. It could get uh, people uh, killed for no reason. That's another danger that exists in a fellow being a uh, fellow claiming that he's a Mashiach. Now, uh, there is some uh, fascinating line in the Rambam where he has a discussion of the false messiahs of uh, Yeshu of uh, uh, Yashka on, uh, and uh, Muhammad and Muhammad on uh, the other hand. The Rambam does uh, suggest, although the Rambam indicates it's not true of this, the Rambam suggests that although there's certainly great harm that came to the Jewish people uh, and to humanity as a result of uh, these false messiahs, but nevertheless, there's some silver lining perhaps of uh, uh, these uh, false uh, messiahs that did come uh, to the world, some sort of silver lining, this very dark cloud of these false messiahs. So maybe we'll take a look at this section of the uh, Rambam, if possible, here on the right side of the uh, sheet. Great, okay, uh, a little bit uh, uh, to move up a little bit. 
uh, no, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, to move down, I'm sorry, my, my mistake. Move down on the sheet, uh, move down a bit more, okay, great. Okay, a little bit smaller so we can see, great, wonderful, wonderful. So it says the Rambam, Yamod Melech from Beis David, Bogeba Tarvel Sek Bukhulek. So, Bechaskot Mashiach, he's successful, Mashiach Mavadai. If he's not successful, then says the Rambam, uh, uh, okay, then it uh, doesn't mean that he's a, necessarily means a wicked person. Uh, uh, rather, Rakhash Bolt will send him as an Isayon. Now the Rambam says, Af Yeshua Hanotsu. Keep in mind, this section is in brackets, which means that it was taken out by the censor. Af Yeshua Hanotsu. Notsu from the ear, Nazareth. Uh, there's a city. Uh, now there's uh, two cities in the Galil. One, one is known as uh, Natsrat Elite, and uh, uh, then there's a uh, uh, regular Natsrat. Uh, there are, uh, the regular Natsrat, I think, is predominantly a large uh, Arab uh, city. Natsrat Elite is a Jewish city. Rabbi Chaim Kanevsky, she lived in well, he suggested, and I think that also officially, the name of the city was changed recently because of the not so Jewish connotation of uh, the name Natsrat Elite. So I think it was changed. I don't remember what the new name is. Uh, so after Yeshua Hanotsri Shedima, Shedima that considered himself to be Mashiach, Benarag Bebezdin, this is an interesting discussion whether he's killed by Bezdin. After all, uh, when was he killed? He was killed at the time uh, that uh, uh, Bezdin uh, uh, wasn't necessarily judging the Nini Pashos, whatever. So it's a discussion as to. Uh, uh, if you take a look in the Franco Rambam in the notes, you have somebody about to talk about that. Daniel says that the Pasuk in Daniel has a reference to that event of this false Messiah. Not everybody agrees that uh, that uh, uh, Pasuk in Daniel is a reference to Yeshua Natsu, but that's what the Rambam does understand. Shenema. Bnei Paritse Amchad will be amongst the sinners of uh, your people. Yenasu will raise themselves, la'amid chazon, to establish the prophecy, to uh, be a fulfillment of the prophecy, and they will fail. Michshol is a pitfall. So says the Rambam, Chiyesh Michshol Godom Yizeh, is there any greater Michshol uh, than uh, Yeshua Notri? Shekol anabiyam dibu shamashiach go el Yisrael, Moshiam, mekabet sinitchem, mechazek mitzvasav. Mashiach is meant to do all those wonderful things. The Zeh, Garam la Abed Yisrael Bacharim, cause the Jewish people to be destroyed, or Fazer Sheim Yisam, and to have them scattered, Lash Ilam, and to lower them, to become downtrodden, La Chlifa Torah, La Tos Roma Olam La Voda Elo Ah, Yibalade Hashem, and so to it that a good part of the world is worshiping Abu Dazar. Rambam, in a couple of places, understands that Christianity is a form of Abu Dazar. Now continues the Rambam uh, and adds the following. Uh, the Rambam prefaces his Chidush with the a fact that uh, he can say for sure that this is the case. <coughs> he says, <laughs> The thoughts of man, uh, the thoughts of God, some which man cannot uh, understand for sure. He loads our king, of course, paraphrasing. The college of Ma'el shall Yeshua Anotzi is shall Zeh Yishmaeli Shamar Agra Muhammad. A non Ella, in a certain sense, they are Miyasher Derech Melech Hamashiach. They paved the way for Messiah. How they paved the way for Messiah? The Rambam just said that they brought so much harm to the Jewish people and to humanity. Uh, says Rambam, they paved the way for Messiah. The second is Olam Kulo Lavot Zisham Biyach. There will be come, come a time when all of humanity will turn to God. And will uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, worship God. Ketzad, Ramam explains. The basic idea is the power. As a result of the spread of Islam, the spread of Christianity, then there is an awareness 
of a concept of redemption. There's an awareness of a concept of Messiah, of Messiah. There's an awareness that there's going to be a time when the world will function like it's meant to function. There's an awareness of there being a God that gave uh, Torah mitzvahs. So uh, the world, so uh, people, they, uh, they uh, talk about uh, this concept of mitzvahs of Torah, Elu Omri Mitzvahs, Elu Emes, Hayu. And some people will say, well, these mitzvahs were true, but they're Batel. And others will say uh, that, uh, hey, uh, that uh, the mitzvahs, they're allegorical. And then uh, when Mashiach will come, Shiach Mod Melech Mashiach, when Mashiach will come, Yatsliach, the Yerub, the Yinasei, Miyad Kulam Chodzim Yodim Shechekan Achalim Avosem. Then they'll realize that, hey, their concept is mistaken. They'll realize what their mistake is. Uh, but at least when it will say on the front page of the New York Times that Messiah has come, we'll know what we're talking about. We'll know uh, that uh, what the Messiah, the concept of Messiah is all about. Uh, so that's a very uh, fascinating uh, idea that the Roman has uh, with respect to uh, the silver lining of that dark cloud of false messiahs that have come upon the uh, uh, Jewish people or the humanity uh, uh, throughout uh, time. Okay. Um, uh, concerning uh, now, I'd like to deal with the following. Uh, at least to introduce the following topic: Does the Messianic period require the Jewish people to do tshuva or not? Do we assume the final redemption will come about when tshuva or without tshuva? So let's begin to look at. The Sugya in Senator here, source five. Source five. Thank you. Great, wonderful, amazing. Amara, Kalu Kalakitsin, all the times, uh, uh, the uh, periods that were uh, hinted to in uh, Daniel, all those periods, they already arrived. Uh, the times that were uh, uh, when Mashiach would come, the worthy. Uh, or the, the times that were suggested for the coming of Mashiach, those times have come already, and now what we're waiting for, that's Shmuel. And then, I'm sorry, that's Ra. Shmuel says uh, some enigmatic statement, uh, maybe we'll hold off with for a second uh, what that uh, means. And then the Gemara says, Rab Lazar Omer, Mishal Osin Shuva Nigalim Mlav and Nigal. Only Rabbi Yosha. And main Osin Shuva and Nigal is a rip chulin. So let me ask you Is there a need for Shuva with respect to the final redemption? According to Rabbi Lazar and according to Rabbi Yoshua. According to Rabbi Lazar and according to Rabbi Yoshua. According to Rabbi Lazar, is there a need for Shuva? I'll answer that. I'll answer the easy question. The hard one. According to Rabbi Lazar, is there a need for Shuva? Yes, there is. Okay, what about a contra Yoshua? Is there a need for Shuva? This might depend on Machlokas between the Bavli and the Yushalm. You see over here uh, that the Yushalmi had a different Girsa than the Bavli. And it's possible that even the Bavli is just a typo. Is the Gerson in the Bavli Ella? Is the Gerson this dialogue between Rab Lazar and Rab Yeshua Ella or Amar Lay? According to the Gerson that we have of Ella, then it would have seen that even Rab Yeshua requires Tshuva. Rabbi Yeshua says, "Then ain't us in Shuba ain't a galin." You're right, but like a Shabbos who mamed the Melech shigzeros and kasha kamen, he saw some Shuba machzir on the muta. So according to the Gersh and the Bavli, it might seem that a Rab Lazar says there's a need for Shuba. Rabbi Yeshua agrees there's a need for Shuba. Just Rabbi Yeshua adds, "Don't think that this is going to go on indefinitely, because after all, if you don't do Shuba on our own," 
then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will see to it that we'll do tshuva by uh, bringing us some king whose gzeros are kosher kahaman, which will force us to do tshuva. The Maharsha suggests that perhaps the Machlok is Rabbi and Rabbi Yeshua, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is whether it's sufficient tshuva me'ava, that's Rabbi Lazar, or will tshuva me'ira do the trick? That's uh, Rabbi Yeshua. But both do require some sort of a tshuva. However, uh, according to the Girsa in the Yushalmi, it could be that things are very different. According to the Girsa in the Yushalmi, it could be that correct reading is the following. Rabbi Yeshua says the main of some and a gully. Or, uh, uh, one second, please. And Rabbi Yeshua says, how does it go? And Rabbi Lazar says there's a need for tshuva. Rabbi Yeshua says, in the Enos and tshuva, ain't a nigdalin? That's crazy. How could that be? Uh, how could that be? Says Rabbi Yeshua. Uh, if we don't do tshuva, we're going to be in Gullus forever? That's ridiculous. Rather, the Gula will come about even without tshuva. That is Rabbi Yoshua, according to the uh, Yushami. Just Rabbi Lazar, according to the Yushami, Amar Le, Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar responds, hey, I hear your question uh, that, uh, hey, it can't be we're going to be in Gullus forever. So says uh, Rabbi Lazar, hey, uh, even according to me, we're not going to be in Gullus forever. You said we're not going to be in Gullus forever. Because you uh, imply, although it didn't state explicitly, that there's no need for uh, tshuva. You say, may know the tshuva, and it's ridiculous. Obviously, there's no need for tshuva. But I, Rabbi Lazar, uh, uh, respond to you that uh, uh, don't worry about our being in Gullus forever, because our Kajba will see to it that we'll do uh, tshuva. Kajba will see to it that we're going to do tshuva in the uh, future. If not, by us uh, doing tshuva on our own, our Kaddish Baruch will send us a melech shek zeros of kosh and that will force us to do uh, tshuva. So uh, at least according to Yishami, it could be that uh, Rabbi Yeshua does not require tshuva. From the Babli, even Rabbi Yeshua might require tshuva. Okay, Lina there, uh, perhaps we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, next time. Um, and with that, uh, conclude our discussion of uh, the Rambam's uh, 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 Mashiach and our uh, talk of Rambam's Aktam uh, Techelek, and then Bezrat Shem move on to the uh, Rambam's Haktama uh, to Perkei Avos. Uh, now, uh, concerning the uh, Rambam's uh, discussion or concerning the Easter on being Machashik the Kate. That's something that we talked about a little bit before uh, Pesach. Um, and uh, uh, so maybe I'll ask uh, the guys to uh, maybe we'll take some sort of vote as to whether uh, we should uh, discuss that. We talked about various reasons. Uh, I think there was some sort of a chug that I gave before Pesach. I'm trying to remember how many people attended. Uh, so. Uh, we'll have to come to some decision as to whether to uh, uh, go over uh, that. Uh, but in any case, so next time I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the need for uh, tshuva, and then, then perhaps already uh, next time we will start uh, the kdama uh, uh, to perkei uh, avos. Karabosa, thank you very much. Uh, have a great uh, day. Amongst the people here. Uh, so again, if you would prefer that we uh, don't uh, discuss that, if you were uh, uh, there when we talked about the Easter of the Mechash of the Kates and would prefer that we move on to something else, then please tell me either now or uh, individually. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, then perhaps we'll uh, skip that part of the discussion. Um, otherwise, we'll have to see. Okay, Ashkar, thank you very much, Rabbi Sleigh.
Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thanks, Akiba, for your. Thank you, uh, Thank you Rama. Thank you.